celebrating a fabulous new season. Seven wonderful nights of entertainment every week throughout the year. For an exciting preview of the great entertainment coming your way on this channel, come along and meet your hosts. Monday. Tuesday. Wednesday. Thursday. Friday. Saturday. Sunday. Howdy. Looks like the fair season's upon us, don't it? I was just sitting here waiting for you all to show up, thinking what a wonderful year these boys at CBS Television have planned for us. As the man down the midway was saying, there's gonna be something exciting for everybody every night in the week. Hold on there, we don't allow no gambling on this midway. Oh, I wouldn't exactly call this gambling, Andy. Fooling with the facts may be a crime down your way, but ought to tell the truth. You get to meet some mighty amusing people who turn their truth-stretching talents into comedy. See what I mean? If you look at it that way. Now here's a young and you'll be seeing around these parts this fall. He's Robert Young, and he'll be joining our Monday night neighbors with a new show called Window on Main Street. Excuse me, uh, Mr. Brooks, but someone left this for you. It's uh, marked urgent. Urgent? Half a letter? My handwriting. September 6, 1934. Dear Tina. Tina? <laughs> now wait. Wait. I remember, yes. Who, uh, who left this? I don't know. I was away from the desk for a moment when I came back there and was. Look, do you know anyone named Tina? Tina who? Well, I, I, I can't remember her last name. But I must find her. It sure do look like a fine way to spend the evening, don't it? Well, now, now, what do we got here? Well, if it ain't our old friends Pete and Gladys, and by the looks of things, they're at it again. You mind if I cut in? Now, here's a bright young lad who would like to proclaim his birthday a holiday. Hello, hello. Go on, Daddy's birthday. Well, of course you do. Gee, we don't have to go to school on Lincoln's birthday or Washington's birthday. Well, honey, when they put my picture on a postage stamp, you won't have to go to school on my birthday either. <laughs> I guarantee it's going to be fun. Well, looky here, will you? I guess they wasn't fooling when they said our Andy Griffith show will be at our same old spot again this fall. Come on. Come on. <laughs> how, how are you? Glad, I'm glad you all are. Hi. Hello there, Chester. Oh, this, how are you? You're looking good. <laughs> What'd you do, dropping that on the whole town? Just about. <laughs> Should you ever go looking for gloomy thoughts, you're not likely to find them on Hennessy, and that's a fact. Our likable young neighbor will be a setting sail again this fall with a colorful crew of the San Diego Naval Hospital. <laughs> Here's a right curious looking show for Monday night. Why, sure, it, it's I've Got a Secret. Gary never was one to keep a secret for long. He's just trying to tell you he'll be joining our Monday night party come this fall. All right, Gary, now just save your voice for the next act. They can't hear you anymore. If you're looking for a fun-packed night of comedy, be watching Monday. Oh, uh, <coughs> Barney said to excuse him. He's gone on down to see if he can find what all this noise is about on Tuesday night. I appreciate it, and see you soon. A sensational gathering of personalities assembled here in one magnificent evening of television entertainment. Just one switch of the magic dial is all it takes 
to see the wondrous... What are you looking at, Buster? Well, Honeykins, don't you remember me? I'm your husband. Why, it is you, Big Daddy. What brings you out to the bright light? It's the baby, baby. She's crying for a mall. When are you coming home? What are you, some kind of a nut or something? If this guy Moore hadn't given me this job, they'd proclaim our farm a disaster area. I know, honey, but the new crop is almost in. And besides, the new programs are starting up on the TV. Like what, for instance? Well, there's a new Tuesday show with Matt Dillon and a new comedy Hi. program. Hi, Gary Moore here with a preview of the wonderful world of Tuesday entertainment. And the fellow's quite right. We'll be having some new neighbors in this year, as well as some old friends who we'll be welcoming back. Speaking of old friends, here's a familiar face you'll be seeing around these parts this season. Marshall Dillon will be commuting between two frontiers this fall. Along with his Saturday chores, he'll be riding herd on the action from Dodge City here on Tuesday night. Did you bury him deep? Deep enough. Oh, I, I killed a man, Marshall. That's a, that's a terrible thing. Braden got what was coming to him, ma'am. Just don't know how it all come about. You remember that promise you made me? Well, I'm releasing you from it. It's the only way I can think of to end it. You mean you want me to go after Lurie? There ain't no other way. Now, coming up right now, as a fellow that we're looking forward to having you meet this season, comedian Dick Van Dyke will be creating double trouble for his family in a new comedy series that you're sure to enjoy. <laughs> Cute. It must be a lot of fun to live with. I laugh all day long. Is that you, dear? Oh, hello, sweetheart. Well, I had a meeting at the office, and I just couldn't get away. Oh, well, how about some coffee? Oh, honey, I'd love some coffee. I'll get you Thank some. You. <laughs> Darling! Marvelous, Nick. And, of course, the schedule. Nice written article. You got away with words, Mr. Major. Smoother than honey on a hot cake. <laughs> Ichabod, I'm going to make this the newspaper's first big project. Thank you. The bulletin is going to launch Great Grandma Hobbs' art career, and we're going to do it right. Looky here. <clears throat> the Phippsboro Bulletin cordially invites you to meet one of America's undiscovered primitive masters, Mahidabel Hobbs, at an exhibit of her work Saturday next, Phippsboro Bulletin office, Cocktails. Oh, Bob, that's wonderful. Oh, I'm glad you like it. I sent out 50 of these to uh, all the right people. I also sent wires to Arthur Barnsdale and uh, Jeremy Lockhart, two of the top art critics in New York. Now, if I can get them to come up here and write about her, well, she'd be the most famous woman since Whistler's mother. Well, what's the matter, Ethel Don't you like the idea? Oh, well, Father's a little bit worried that all this publicity would offend the Hobbs' pride. Oh, come on now, Ethel Blood. When I came up here from New York, and you sold me the paper. Right lag. Well, you said the town needed a progressive outlook. Said that. Well, if I can handle this project of mine right, uh, we'll put Phippsburg right on the map. Be an overnight sensation. Things move sort of slow in these parts, Mr. Major. Might take us a couple of years to be an overnight sensation. Go on. People are the same the world over. If you can build up enough enthusiasm and excitement, they'll go along with you. Sure, I hope you're right. Well, I got a million things to do. Thanks for the coffee. Got to run. Bye. Morning, Mr. Major. Father, isn't Mr. Major a wonderful man? When I look at him through those bright eyes of yours, Abigail, I suppose he's just about the most wonderful man ever there was. In my book, here is one of the nicest guys in show business, the clown prince of comedy, Red Skelton. <laughs> Much love to you, Red, from all of us. We'll be seeing you back here in the fall. 